Good morning. It is great to be with you this morning. I'm so very thankful for the opportunity uh, to spend this day with you and to open God's Word and to share a little bit with you that hopefully will encourage you, give you a little bit of inspiration perhaps. But as we get started, I want to toss a name to you to see if you might know who this person is. Do you know the name Michael Buffer? Recognize that name? It might not be as, as uh, familiar as uh, Sugar Ray Leonard or Hulk Hogan or even as, uh, as common as you know Donald Trump. But Michael Buffer worked with all three of those men. You see, you can tell by his picture that he was an announcer. Actually, he was an introducer. As the mic hang, hung from the ceiling and he took it, he coined the words that you know very well, let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to fight. Now, why in the world would we talk about fighting on a Sunday morning? Why would we say, let's get ready? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready for it? Why would we say that? What would be the purpose of taking that stance? You need to understand fighting comes in three basically different directions. Fighting can even be the, the fisticuffs, the let's get ready to fight, boxing, wrestling, whatever it might be. Or it could be the emotional fighting. That I disagree with you and I have a hard time with this. And that's a fight. That's internal and emotional. But our focus, as I'm sure you're well aware this morning, is more of a spiritual fight. Are you ready to rumble against the devil and his schemes? Are you ready to take on a fight against the devil? Or are you a pacifist? And I hope you know what I'm trying to say here. I just kind of like everything to go smooth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not called to sit on the sidelines and watch what's happening in the arena. We are called to be in the arena. We are called to fight. This morning what I want to do is I want to share with you something that you already well know. But I want to hopefully give it to you in a different, in a different lens in a different, uh, a different view, look through a different window. And by the way, as I say that word, I'm thinking about what Brody did this morning in class. Excellent, excellent lesson. If you're missing the adult class in here, I'll just say it really simply, shame on you. Because you're missing out on some great material from God's word that Brody's able to give to you. So I encourage you and thank you, Ernest, for that reminder to be in class because we need to do that. But ladies and gentlemen, we're in a fight. We are in a battle. You cannot make any bones about that. We are in a fight. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to rumble? Are you ready to fight? One of the things that we do, and I'm so very thankful for my son, and the way he's able to stand up here and lead, lead us in worship, and the, the, the expression on his face that says, I believe in this, this is a good thing, that's exactly right. And, and we seem to encourage each other that love is what lifts us. Just like love lifted Peter as he was sinking in the sea, he, saved, he was saved by the love of Jesus Christ and brought up, and he saw past the wind and the waves. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to see past the fighting and realize what our battle is all about. So you know what we do is we sing to each other what we call, or what I like to call, battle songs. Songs like, soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Which, by the way, you need to sing all five of those verses. Logan didn't lead that one this morning, but that's okay. When you lead that song, song leaders get all five verses because that talks about the entire panoply of our armor. Or how about uh, onward Christian soldiers marching as to not the store, but to war. You see, we are in a battle. We're in a battle. So we have fight songs. We have battle songs. And those songs are not sung to pacify us. They are not sung so we kind of feel good and we get our battery charged and I go back around the regular routine. The battle song is to say, let's go ready to fight. That's maybe difficult for us to wrap our minds around, but I want you to see a song. It's in your book. And if you'd like to take, please take your number one book. You remember that, don't you? Take your number one book, be ready in Ephesians chapter 6, but then take your number two book. Get your number two favorite book and turn to 469. We're going to sing in a moment. I'm not going to ask Logan to do it. I'll go ahead. I'll put it inside the lesson. But we're going to look at this song. And perhaps it's one you've sung for years. 
Faith is the victory. Let me by a quick show of hands from, from side to side. How many know faith is the victory? Let me just see those hands come up. Of course. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers, stay sitting down. We're okay. Things are going good. You see, what this song is saying is it's we are camped along the hills of heaven. Aren't we? Indeed we are. We are set up, ready to go to heaven, because I'm waiting for that day when the Lord says, come on home. And we even talked about that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're ready for that day when we, when the silver cord will break, and we get to go home and enter, the, and, and enter paradise with our, with our Father. And we are soldiers that are encamped along the hills of life. But then we say to each other, get up. Stand up. Arise. Get up. Get going. Why? I'm, I'm doing fine. The sun is shining. It's beautiful looking over the grassy knoll. Why do, I need to, why do I need to get up? Because you see, there is a battle that is coming. And if you don't believe this, ladies and gentlemen, you've you're got your eyes closed. We need to get up, and the song says, press the battle, air the night. I don't use the word air very often, unless I err, which I'd make a lot of errors. But this is not saying mistakes. Press the battle before the night covers up those skies that are glowing. We've got to get ready to fight, because there is a battle coming. And you see that battle it's going to cover up the glowing skies of heaven and keep other people from seeing it. So we have to press the battle against that. But I love the terminology of this. As we sing this song, you're seeing what happens. Against the foe, that would be our opponent, that would be the devil, the forces of darkness, against the foe in the valleys that are below us, we should have all of our strength hurled. Notice a couple of things there. It's not saying let all my strength be hurled because it's not about me. We do this as a collective body. I can't say, well, well, well Daniel and, and Ernest and, and Aaron and, and Richard, you guys go and fight that battle. We'll wait. No, all of our strength. And it must be hurled. It must be thrown with tenacity and vigor. I put that picture up there. That's my youngest when he was still in high school. And I don't know if you can see his face very well, but he has got a, a determined look on his face. He's pitching. He's coming off the mound, pitching to the opponent, and he's not throwing a tater. He's not hoping that that batter will hit the ball. He wants to strike him out. And with all of his strength, with all of his might, he is hurling that ball. Do we do that when we fight the devil? Do we take all of our strength and give it to him? Or do we just kind of, ah, I, I hope he stays over there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a fight. Are you ready to rumble? Are you ready to take this fight? Or you're not too sure about this? Faith is the victory, and we know it. We know that our faith is what brings us the victory, and that's what will overcome the world. You've got, a, you've got Ephesians open. Now, I want us to read this real quickly. We're going we're gonna to touch on this as we go through this morning. But I want you to hear what Paul says to the church in Ephesus in chapter 6. And I know you read this time and time again, but I want you to see it again. He's talked about the family relationships that we should have with our, with our children, with, with fathers and their children, with children and their parents. He even talks about the workplace and masters and slaves and workers. But then he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Not mine. His might. In that strength, put on the full armor of God. Why? So that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. You see, the devil's got a plan. If you did not know that, if you're not aware that the devil is trying to destroy you, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're being deceived. He wants your soul. Are, are, you familiar, are, you, are you aware of that? He wants you to go to hell, period. He does not want you to be... Now, what he wants you to do is he wants you to not realize that and just kind of cruise through life. 
oh yeah, I know, I know he wants, I, I know he's trying to, to take me, I know he's trying to destroy me, but I'm taking care of myself. Not if you're not wearing the armor, you're not. Put on the full armor, armor so you can stand firm against those schemes. For our struggle is not against Donald Trump. Our struggle is not against Sugar Ray Leonard. Our struggle is not against Hulk Hogan. Our struggle is not against any of the people that we see in this world. It's not against the guy that cuts you off or sideswipes you as you're driving down the highway. That's not the enemy. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. This darkness that's trying to cover up the light. That's where our struggle is. Anything that comes between you and your God. Anything that's stopping you from being closer to your God. That's what you've got to be concerned about. And that's what you've got to realize is the struggle of spiritual darkness. Against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That talks about spiritual warfare. Therefore, since you know your battle... Paul says, because of that, you need to do this. And he's going to list out some things. We're going to talk about them through this song in just a moment, but I want you to see them. Take up the full armor of God so that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore. Having girded your loins with truth. We call that what? The belt of truth. We, we pull everything together with the belt of truth. Truth encircles us. That's what keeps us together. And put on the breastplate of righteousness. What's beneath the breastplate? It's your vital organs that keep you alive. Protect them with righteousness. And put on your feet, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Don't go around barefooted. Put yourself prepared to go out into the, to the field, to work, to tell people about Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of that. And that's done in peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. My faith is what I hold fast to. And it's a shield. Well, what does a shield do? It protects me. Protects me from what? It protects you from the the flaming arrows of the evil one. And it actually says it will extinguish the flaming. And I can go into the details of what that's all about historically, but you get the idea I've got to have my faith because that's what protects me from the things, the darts that the devil will throw at me. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. That protects your mind, it protects your brain. Put the helmet of your salvation on and the sword of the spirit, which is God's word and protect yourself. But it, and that's usually where we end. We usually say, well, there we, there we are, the belt and the breastplate and the, and the, and the shoes and the, and the, and the uh, helmet. And we got all the pieces, of the, uh, we got the shield and the, we're ready to go. But don't forget the, last, the next verse. Because if we forget this, we're forgetting a very valuable piece of the armor of God. And that's our prayers. We've got to be able to have that line of communication, that, that phone call to our God. Does he know what you need? Obviously he does. He's your creator. He knows your struggles. He knows the, the issues that are plaguing you on a day-by-day basis. And I'm so thankful that he does. But just like the dad needs to hear his son's voice, God needs to hear ours. Father, I need you. Father, I'm, I, I'm having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for the blessings that you give me. Father, I don't know how to get through this one. He needs to hear us express that. Will we do it? Or do we just make that one, one of the things that we just kind of do? Oh, I said a prayer before we ate. I said a prayer before I went to bed. Or do we take our petitions and lay them before him? You see, ladies and gentlemen, our prayers cannot be hollow. Because Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, pray with the Spirit and pray with understanding. I know what I'm talking about here. And I'm putting this out to him. I'm laying my heart out to my God. Again, he knows. But he wants to hear it. So as we consider our battle, and as we consider these words from Paul, we also need to remember that his banner over us is love. Vacation Bible School. 
I was going to see if I could get any of the eyes of the kids to pop up. Not yet. Okay. They're still focused on other things that they're working on. That's good. They're here. That's important. VBS, do you all ever seen the song? He invites us into his banquet table, and his banner over us is love. Is that a song that's new to you all? Oh, it is. Okay. Well, I won't sing it, because I don't want to sh shock you with one. But that's actually scripture. It comes from, oops, I didn't advance it. It comes from the book of Song of Solomon. The second chapter, verse 2. He invites us into his banquet table. We're invited to the banquet table of God. And the banner that he puts over us is his love. That's a song we sing as a kid's song, but it's also a song that we sing here. It's the reminder that in battle, in war, as we're going to fight, I look for the banner of love. Because that's my God, and that's where I hold fast to. That's my banner. That's my team. That's where I'm going to be drawn to. Because that's love, and that's his banner that is over us. And then we go on to sing that our sword is the word of God. Now, you've got to stay on this verse, because if you're not careful, you'll do like I did for years, and you'll sink through it and not even have a clue what you just said. Our sword, it's the word of God. Yes, we know that one. Then we sing this verse. We tread the road that saints above with shouts of triumph trod. What? I just said some things I don't, tread, road, trod. I don't usually talk that way. It's poetry, yes. But notice what you're saying. I'm walking down the path. I'm walking down the road that Christians who have gone before me walked. And they walk that shouting victory. We tread the road. We walk down the road that the saints who are above, they have walked before us and have died and gone on to heaven with shouts of triumph trod down this road. Okay, I can grab that. That sounds good. But what about this next phrase? This is the one that, quite frankly, I would just kind of sing past because I didn't understand it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Take a look at that again before we go any further. In addition, take up the shield of faith, which is able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. You see, when I think of the whirlwind, because this is the next line, by faith... They like a whirlwind's breath, sweat on or every field. It's, when I hear of the word whirlwind, I kind of think of maybe a little dust devil out in West Texas where I grew up, Just spinning across there and you see it going across, it picks up a few things. But ladies, that's not the whirlwind. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the whirlwind that we're singing about here. You see, the saints that went above and walked down the path that we are following and that shouted victory, they walked by faith. Those folks took faith like a tornado. And with urgency, they spread the word of God to this world. By faith, with urgency, they swept across every field. Doing what? Telling people about Jesus Christ and the importance of coming to him. The faith by which they, the saints above, conquered death. That's still our shining shield. That's still the shield that we read about in Ephesians chapter 6. That's still our shining shield. With urgency, I take this fight. Now, if, you, if you're following along with me, you've seen verse 1 and verse 2, and now there's verse 3. But there's actually another verse that's not included inside, our, inside of our number 2 book. But I want you to hear the words because it continues to go with the same idea of Ephesians chapter 6. It starts this way. On every hand, the foe we find drawn up in dread array. On every hand, in other words, all around us, the enemy is around us. And they're ready to go. Dread array means they're all lined up and ready to go. They are ready to take, they're ready to rumble. They're ready for the fight. Remember, we're singing a battle song. On every hand, the foe we find, they're all around us ready to go, drawn up and ready to go. We need to leave our tents behind, our tents of easiness, and we need to march on to the battle, to the fray. That's what the fray is. So as we consider what's before us, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready to fight? Are we ready to leave our tents and go into the fight? Or do we want to keep it easy? Arise, soldiers. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, but I'll uh, draw attention to 14, is the next line. 
Let tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet is on each head. And truth is all girt about. And then as we continue this song, you're going to see the last part that's going to remind you of the saints. The earth shall tremble beneath our tread. And it'll echo with our shouts. Well, how does that happen? What does that look like? There's a gentleman by the name of um, Joe Wells who was uh, sharing something with me a year or so ago. He's from, he's from the Alabama area. Uh, Doug, you may know who Joe is. Uh, has written some great, uh, great study guides and is a fantastic speaker. If, if White House ever looks to have a, a speaker come in to do some parenting classes or do some, uh, some inspirational uh, uh, studies for your, for your families and the kids, it'd be a great one. But Joe told me this one time. He said, uh, being from Alabama, he said that there was a game between the Crimson Tide and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Auburn, the Auburn Tigers. And this is this was several years ago. And he remembered here in the report that the game was really tight, really close. He wasn't able to see it, but he heard about it. And the game was back and forth and back and forth until the, the waning minutes of the game. And Auburn, it was being played in Auburn. The Tigers were able to drive down at the very last few seconds, score that winning goal. And you can imagine in a football arena, what happens? Lots of excitement. Lots of cheering, lots of jumping up and down. If you've ever seen some of the things from the Pittsburgh Stadium, how even the stands seem to be, which scares me to think about that. But it moves. There's, at the Auburn-Alabama game, the roar of that stadium was identified on the Richter scale. The shouts of victory were so incredible that it caused the earth to tremble. Can we do that? Figuratively, we must. We must have confidence of who we are and whose we are and be ready to shout, I believe in my Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm going to tell this world that's trying to be covered over by darkness, there is hope. Shout, victory. The earth shall tremble beneath our march with shouts of triumph. And then the last verse, which is your fourth verse, reads this way. And it's actually Revelation chapter 7. It says, To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. White robes. We read that in Scripture. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. White raiment shall be given. And before the angels, he... That's us, shall know his, that's Jesus, name confessed in heaven. You see, when we come to the day of judgment, I think the scripture says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When I understand that, and I realize that that is the objective from all of my battles, is to stand before the throne of God more like kneel before the throne of God. But to be clothed, ready to enter heaven with him. You see, this is a battle song, but this last phrase is what really ticks it over the edge for us. This is the battle call. This is the call to go to battle. Remember, encamped along the hills of light, you Christian soldiers arise and press the battle before the night covers up the skies. Against the foe in the valley below, let all of our strength be hurled, because this is... Faith is the victory, and we know this, that overcomes the world. On every hand, the foe we find drawn up in dread array. We've got to leave the tents of ease behind and go onward to the fray. We've got salvation's helmet on our heads, and we've got truth around us, and we've got the sword and the spirit, and we know that the earth will tremble when we shout victory in Christ. Here's the battle call for this last verse. If we're faithful, and we receive the white garments... We're told this. Then onward from these hills of light, our hearts are on fire for God. Our hearts with love of flame. We will vanquish all the host of night. In Jesus' conquering name. This is a battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's not two men stepping out into an arena to wrestle one another. 
It's not two men who have put on glo boxing gloves and are ready to punch each other's lights out. It, it quite frankly is not even the battle that we find when we look at uh, Cain and Abel back in Genesis chapter 4. I don't even think it's necessarily the battle that we find as we read in, in James, that emotional battle, battle of, um, of argumentativeness and fighting with each other within, within the turmoil. This is our spiritual battle. And this is where we stand up and we go to war against the spiritual forces. How do we do that? Well, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to take your sword. You've got to protect your head. You've got to protect your organs. You've got to make sure you're ready on your feet. You've got to keep truth all around you. You've got to keep that shield of faith. Never let go of your shield of faith. Never put down your faith. And then be ready to fight. But if you think about that armor that we read about and that we, saw, that we sing about, we conquer in Jesus' name. That's the last part that should go up there, and I didn't get that up there. We do this in the name of Jesus, not in our own strength, not in our own might. But ladies and gentlemen, that battle with my sword of spirit, my shield of faith, that battle is not intended to protect me when I run away. Because my backside is totally exposed. And I cannot start, stop the darts. If you are in this battle with Christ... If you're in this battle as brothers and sisters, do not turn away. Because that's when you're exposed. That's when you are giving in. So I want to encourage you to remember that faith is the victory. Faith is what brings us the victory. And we sing that. But as we sing this, and we're going to sing all four of these verses. It's kind of a, a middle part of the sermon, if you will. As we sing this, I want to do something different. I'm going to ask you to do it. It's not just going to be me. I need all of you to do it. What happens when we get the chorus? We get the chorus, and everybody stops except for the ladies. They go, faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. I want all of us to sing faith. All voices. Faith is the victory. Now, I know that we've got a, a, harm, a counter medley there. Faith. Faith is the victory. The guys do that. If you want to hop off on that, you can. But stay with that first punch. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Bill, I'm going to let you advance this because if I try to advance it and lead and sing at the same time, I'll mess it up. Let's sing this song together. You've sung it before. Maybe now you'll sing it anew. Encamped along the hills of light, she crept and soldiers rise and press the battle ere the shimmer the glowing skies against the embers below. Let all our strength be heard. Faith is our victory, we know that overcome. Everybody together. Faith is a victory. Shouts of triumph trod by faith, they like Owen's breath swept on for every field. The faith by which they conquer death is still our shining shield. Everybody together, faith. Drawn up in dread array, let tents of ease be left behind, and onward to the fray. Salvation, put on each head with truth or good about. The earth shall tremble the tread, and I go with a shout. Comes the foe. 
white rain been shining in before. His name in heaven, then onward from the hills of light, our hearts will love our flame, will vanquish the host of night in Jesus. Amen. Faith is the victory. Battle songs, songs that remind us that we are in a battle, but we sing to encourage each other. It's nothing new. Ladies and gentlemen, they, they've done it all throughout history. You can look back to the Civil War and how many songs of encouragement and, and, and battle songs. And we'll rally around the flag, boys, rally once again. That was a Union song, but it was so strong that the Confederates took that same song and made it their own as well. You see, we, song, we sing songs to encourage each other and to say, we can do this. We can get through this together. We should never be ashamed to sing, especially when it comes to praising our God. Hold on to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Realize and, and remember what that armor is all about. And, and it's not just a, a cute little picture that I can put all these. This is truth. And ladies and gentlemen, this is real. This is happening today. We're safe right now, or we're, we're, we may have a feeling of safety right now, because we're together, the army is collected, and we're getting the strength from each other, but just what's going you know what's going to happen in just a few minutes? We're going to open those doors, and you're going to walk out, and you'll be by yourself. Your brothers and sisters are a phone call away, and you know that, but tomorrow you'll go to work, and you'll face this by yourself. You've got to hold fast to the armor of God. And the most immediate direct connection is the prayer. And I would implore that you as brothers and sisters never stop supporting and loving each other. Because the devil wants to get and break us up. That's, what, that's, a, that's actually a military tactic. Divide and conquer. So stay strong. Realize that God's given us everything we need. God has given us everything that we need to be able to stand firm. And I'd encourage you with Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. I won't read the whole passage, but you, if you read this passage, you want to write this down and pull this up, I want you to catch this one. Ladies and gentlemen, as we fight this battle, we hold fast to God's word. Because this is indeed our number one book. It's what we hold on to. It's what gives us, it's what gives us the strength to make it through. And we need each other. Because the scripture says that if God is for us, who can be against us? Do you think God's going to say, well, good luck on that, that battle. I'm, I'm not with you. I'm going to send you off. God's with you. He's standing right beside you. The truth that you have through God's word is around you. You've got salvation's helmet on, on your head. You've got the shield of faith. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're a child of God, you're the only one that can put that stuff down. You're the only one who can take it off. The devil cannot pull your faith out of your hands. You will either choose to hold on to it or you won't. You see, when I consider the fact that um, we are in a fight, I have to ask you this, not with a microphone in my hand, not getting ready for a couple of men to step out into the arena to fight, but I've got to ask you this. Are you ready to rumble? Are you ready to fight? Because your opponent is ready. He has been for ages. And he knows you. He knows your weak spots. He knows a punch to the ribs is not a good place for you to be punched. So you've got to know how to defend that. You'll only know if you use God's word. He knows what your thoughts are. He knows your weaknesses. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to rumble? I pray that you don't ever feel like you've got to do it by yourself. Because God gave us everything we need through this. But he also gave us a family. And that family is when I feel like I'm getting beat up. The family is when I don't know where to go. 
The family is where I can turn. And if we ever say to each other, ah, sorry, I don't have time. If we ever say to each other, well, good luck with that one. That's a tough one. If we ever take and turn each other away, ladies and gentlemen, we are not being the kind of a family that God intends us to be. So you've got to get to know each other. You've got to spend time with each other, i.e., come to Bible class. That's a great way to start getting more ammunition. Come to, the, come to the supper on Wednesday night. That's a great way to continue the fellowship. Come to class. Come to fellow, the loved one of the group. Spend time together because that's how we strengthen this body so we can rumble. The fight is not against each other. We have to focus on where we're going to go. And if you need help in that fight, if you're saying, man, this has been a tough one. You know, there's many times, because for years I led singing when, when the kids were growing up. And I'll be honest with you, there's many times I've thought, man, I need to sit down. I need to come forward and ask for prayers because I'm struggling. And pride has a tendency sometimes to stop us. That's one of the devil's tools. Pride. And if you're thinking, well, yeah, I got some struggles, but nobody needs to know about that. Absolutely not. Your brothers and sisters need to embrace you and pray with you. Maybe you haven't made the decision to start fighting. I can tell you the devil's happy with where you're at right now. But if you do make that decision to say, I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior, and I want to walk into this watery grave, and I want to be baptized, I can promise you the fight is on. And he will come and rumble with you at every step. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not asking you to, to shy away. I'm not asking you to sit in your comfortable tents of ease. Leave him behind and let's go and fight a righteous, godly fight for the souls of men that we can return to our creator. If there's anything that this congregation can do to support you, to pray for you, to love you, to bring you into the fold, you've got a great opportunity right now as together we stand and as we sing.